whatever, but I started with, I started with, I believe, $1,500. I bought like 10 bundles, broke them down, flipped it, took that, put it, flipped it, and I was just. Listen, I'm here at the Boss's Mansion. I am one of the hosts today. Um, where I've been doing what I do and had to share pizzas, split slices of pizzas. And my big ass love pizza. <laughs> and for me to split a slice is OD. Like you was baby. Oh, y'all cut it like in Like we 16. cut it and we cut it in like, like no, not a pie, slice. bitch, a slice. Yeah. No, y'all cut the slices. Cut we the cut pie. the side. No, 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 no. Y'all only not. had one slice. We had one oh. slice. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a whole pie, I would have ate three slices. <laughs> I'm telling them I had to bust down one slice with and cheese. Share it with other I had to cheese. share it with my whole girl. My whole girl, she, me and her. We sit up here doing videos, trying to go viral, trying to make shit happen. And we was hungry. We grabbed the motherfucking Pepsi. Cut that in half, got ice, put it in red water, and then slice this shit in half. Listen, but we was outside and we was doing what we do. Now I'm proud to say that that struggle turned into me making millions of dollars. Not yet, but at that almost, You're almost at that into point. I spoke yeah. into existence. All the shit. I was taking buses. I was calling out of work. I was working. Like, I got a whole big story, but regardless of the fact, I took that leap of faith and I quit my job. And I know that's bugged out for some people. Like I was making like almost two hundred thousand a year, really doing what I do. And I quit my job to do comedy full time. And you know, like comedy do not pay. Straight social media. A comedy does not pay. If you a comedian, that's why I don't really do stand up like that. Yeah. But because because a nigga offered they me bring $50, you out and they barely he said, "Stage, I'll give you fifty dollars for." For a set tonight. Get and I was like, you know what, here. sir? Keep your fucking fifty dollars. Cause I eat a hundred and twenty dollars for Uber Eats. How am I gonna get something to eat with fifty dollars? I said, I'd rather do it from the passion, from the heart. You understand? Oh, and no. I will talk your ears off about comedy. Like I said, I'm here from a marketing standpoint and just helping you guys propel that. And I'm so great I'm grateful, I'm blessed to be able to be in that position to do that. So anyway, without further ado, <laughs> I'm gonna introduce Miss Chastity Autumn, who is a world-renowned world. Cause she just came from Paris. She just got off a flight from Paris to be here. To be here. Okay. She was on tour. And she is very, very talented. Very so Oh, me, don't forget she did who was it? Summer Walker? Oh, and she ten does, minutes in the backseat of yeah, a car yeah, on the way to the BTO. Yeah, that was she like, does a like, you know, your favorite But no, in the backseat of a car. Though. In the backseat of a car. On the way in the Uber like this. Bring it. No blow dryer. Did she no have did she blow did she have sage? She was burning sage and she was doing all type of crazy shit in the back of the So know? wait, how y'all plugs in the how y'all plugs in the hot tools? Oh, yeah, you ain't burn her, you ain't get sued. See yeah, me on the other hand, everybody that you could think of, everybody that you could sport. think of that's on <laughs> the radio, sis has done, including Stony. You understand? But sis, <laughs> all right, like she was baby. in. No, I mean, sorry, I'm not tell her that baby. Story. <laughs> all right, you let's give it up for Chastity, please. Chastity, order. I'm a little shy. I'm 22 years old. Um, I've been doing hair since I was, I want to say like six, because my mother just couldn't do hair. I was always looking like shit at school, and I was getting made fun of, because it was like a lot of white people. So I used to live in Florida, in Tampa. And then we moved back to New York, because all my family is from New York, so we was originally from New York. Um, we moved back to New York, and I was around 13, I started doing hair. I started doing my sister hair, because originally, I wanted to do fashion, so I was going to some school in New York called FIT during the summer, and I would take like sewing classes and stuff because I wanted to be a fashion designer. And then after that, like I would do my sister's hair and shit, like we would watch YouTube videos, and I would just learn the sewing pattern, do it on her. Then her friends started coming to me. I was doing them for free, and then I was like, I was doing a lot of networking. I think the first people that hit me was the Clermont twins. And they was like, do you do hair for promo? So I was like, nah, like I never did that. Like, this is my prices. <laughs> so I told them my prices. They respected it though. They respected it. They was like, 
okay, like, we got you. Like, come. Like, they respect the fact that I was in school. I'm like, I'm in school. Like, I need... So then after that, I'm, I would say a big thing for me was I'm collecting my check because I initially just feel like I spend my bread on what the fuck I like. And when people like it, they're going to spend that bread. Every person that I have went to to do their hair, they have spent that money. So then after that, um, yeah, I just started doing a lot of trends. I did I like a baby hair, curl, started a trend or whatever. Um, I started that trend on this girl named Miss Heather Rose because I was doing her hair a lot in Atlanta and then after that I, I was he Summer Walker's hairstylist for a year um who else did I get to work I got to work with a lot of people y'all Mulatto, Cashflow, I was doing Cashflow for a year, BMF um yeah I did a lot of people I said like I probably had like a few friends that was like Instagram influencers so they had like a little call on Instagram and then I started realizing how Instagram was impacting just everybody's career so I started to try to strive towards that then eventually like just going so hard and not stopping I end up doing like Alexa Sky I ended up getting close with the Fab Five and then just keep pushing and pushing and pushing 50 with all of that promo I feel like as long as you go into somebody that you feel like you gotta pay attention to they um target audience, audience. like audience. me for example I do promo for other people when I do it it takes the fuck off why because I have nothing but girls first of all 95% of my followers is girls that's number one number two people know that I'm picky like if you know me I don't play with my hair my makeup artist what I wear what I dress so if I post something they already know like I we could trust her because I built that reputation so just go to people if you are going to promo that you know has fans that actually follow what they do like <laughs> all right so listen Sony stepped out but what we gonna do is one by one because I know y'all it's like a dragon, right? All right, cool. All right. <laughs> my name is Briley, my business name. Um, my lead in service is eyelash extensions. But I pretty much could do everything. I'm versatile. I try to learn. I try to have a lot of stuff under my belt. But I primarily do lashes. Um, I would say my biggest my biggest downfall with myself is like when y'all said y'all gotta pop your shit I be trying to be so humble and I don't be trying to like step on people's toes or make it seem like I'm better than nobody or too good so I don't really even promote a lot so mm -hmm. a lot of people be like yo you used to pro promote so much now you don't we be forgetting that you do lashes or we thought you moved OT cause you always you only post when you out of town you don't post when you home so I felt like I had majority of my city on lock so it's like if you know you know so I so just stop I just stop posting yeah. <laughs> okay so I'm tooting I pretty much do everything like I do hair I've done lashes I cook I'm in the fashion like I think my biggest problem though is like you were saying you got to find a passion for something I think fashion is my passion but okay. Well, not even think. Fashion is my passion because the bitch puts the shit on. And yeah, mm. let that be known. Yeah. But, um, Hold on yeah, it's just like, Hold on me personally, I feel like I don't know how to get into that industry. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. how do you just jump out there and be like, oh, I'm a wardrobe stylist. Yeah. And people actually want to book with you. Right, like, right, right. people don't be trying to just look at shit when they be like, oh, you don't got that many followers or you don't got that many mm -hmm. likes. And it's like, that shit is weak as fuck. People but, um, I'm in the beauty industry. I do permanent makeup, lash extensions, stretch mark camouflage, um, PMU removal. Like, if you got your brows done and you don't like how they came out, I can remove it for you and do it over. Um, my biggest issue that I have is just taking a leap of faith and just starting out and building clientele. That's my thing. I mean, I did the promo thing, like everyone was saying, like paid a few Instagram, you know, models. Did it, it really you? work? No. I don't. All right, I'm Sin. <laughs> I'm Sin. My name is Sin Slade on Instagram. Um, I do hair. I do like literally everything. I'm really known for doing braids. I've been braiding since I'm like 14. And then when I was like 17, some girl came from Atlanta and asked me to do a weave. But I didn't know how. But she told me how to do it and I did it by what she told me. And then she stuck with me and I practiced on her and I got a little lit doing that. Then a few years later, I started trying with the closures and front tools and started messing with that. But I'm really known for my braids. But I want to get more into the wig feel. And I'm more into, like, <coughs> colored hair and stuff like that. So, yeah. 
Hey y'all, I'm Big Nay. Nice to meet y'all. Um, I'm a chef. Um, the name of my business is called Tubby's Kitchen. Um, I've cooked for Rolling Ray, um, Dream Doll, and Glamazante. I said like my biggest struggle would be um, reaching more people in the industry. My goal is to be a travel chef, so like that's all I want to do. Um, and I guess it's just like getting there. I'm from DC, so it's like it's kind of hard to reach people as if it would be if I was like living in like Atlanta or like Florida or somewhere else like that. You know what I'm saying? Why is that like but, a How y'all doing? My name is Armani, uh, or y'all could call me Axe, but I'm a female barber. Um, I'm located in Maryland. Um, my struggle is not necessarily like, I know my shit tough. Like, I'm better than most men that's been cutting for over 15 years. I'm better than most master barbers out this drink. So, um, my, my thing is, I just don't know how to make myself more appealing to get responses. Cause I already get negative feedback cause I'm a female. A lot of men don't want females cutting their hair or they never had that experience. So I always get that, that lash back. Um, so that's, I guess, what I'm more so here to find out. Like I call myself a lit lame, because mm -hmm. I'm lit like that, but I be in the back, you feel me? I don't really do too much in the front. But I decided to start selling wigs because I always love getting my hair done. I was always that girl, like, I'm gonna go get my hair done every week like we doing that but i also do car rentals moving company i'm about to get a contract with like women shelter and family shelter with my vans or whatever to help the families move because i was personally in a shelter with my two feel me but we made it we out that bitch and we ain't ever looking back feel me i'm shy my voice don't go loud okay i'm shy and i'm a hairstylist and i'm a rapper and from Dallas, Texas, and I just have to stop being shy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Henny. Um, I'm a Brooklyn hairstylist. Yeah. I've been doing hair for a very, very, very long time. Like, I remember I probably was like four years old. It was Christmas, and my parents, they finally bought my first doll. And I was sitting there twisting the doll hair up, and my dad, he came over. He told me how to braid. So ever since then, like, it was up and stuck. Like, I just, you know, anywhere I would go, I'll be playing in here. My godmom, she had a shop. So I was there after school, stuff like that, helping her out. I'm, I'm like new, like, I'm trying to start a business. I want to start, like, waxing. And I'm, like, trying to get in the cannabis industry. Into what? The cannabis industry. Oh, me? Mm hmm. Like I'm currently in a program, like the money. Like like, no, like the cultivation. Like I want to make people their own strengths, mm -hmm. or like I want to do like weed and meditation you classes. Be so I'm Mo, the CEO. Okay. Um. Thank you. Um, I'm a hearing specialist first, and then um, I'm a wig specialist second. Like a hearing I specialist. You. You need to come for a test. Babe. I need to come for a test. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here in special first. Um, and then I'm a wig specialist second. Um, I have a business degree. Uh, I am licensed. Um, and I like doing wigs. I do like sew ins too, but I really like wigs because, I mean, I don't really have to deal with too much. It's very easy. I do it how I like. You say you like it, I like it. Boom. And so. Well, hi, my name is Destiny. I'm also the owner of Overly Obsessed Cosmetics. For now, I'm just selling lashes. My goal is to sell things that, you know, females just love to obsess over. As soon as you put it on, you're just like, oh my God, like, I love this, I need to get more. You know, like your next addiction. That's like my overall goal. Um, as for myself, I am also a part-time cosmetology student. I am trying to get my license. I also do makeup. <laughs> um, I'm big on makeup. I'm like a beauty influencer as well. The reason why I started my business is because I'm always helping out other small businesses and getting them their products out there as well. And people are like, yo, I'm always buying products from other people and the way that you promote them, you go so hard. You need to promote yourself more. So I was like, you know what? You're right. So I just took a shot on myself, started my business back in December on my birthday and 
it's just been what it's been. So I'm Kayla, um, known as Ace of Lens. Um, I have a hair studio in Brooklyn. Um, I specialize in braiding hair, stitch braids. Um, I teach classes on how to stitch braid. Um, I also, I'm based in New York City, but I also travel to um, Texas, uh, Houston and Dallas, as well as Atlanta. Hello everybody, I'm Shay. So I've been living in Florida for two years now. I have a clothing brand, a cleaning business, and um, I just now starting my property management to do Airbnbs. I want to thank y'all so much for like really sharing what's your struggles and stuff like that. And we definitely, like Stoney said, we're going to try to go to people individually or just separate. I mean, individually or separate. Ain't that the same thing? I'm tired. Individually or as a group. And we're going, you know, chop it up with you guys and just really try to make sure you get the best experience out of this. Period.